Welcome back guys. In this video, we're gonna rebuild and reseal this 1976 25 horsepower Evan Rude lower unit. As always, make sure to check the video description for links to the rebuild or seal kit for this lower unit as well as other years and uh, horsepower models. This process will be the same for many different year and horsepower uh, models for Johnson Evanry lower units. So this should be a good tutorial even if you don't have a 25 horsepower. Sometimes when you get these lower units, um, you know, say I got this one off of eBay and you can see that the threads in the lower unit screws are almost stripped out. This one's a Phillips head, this one's a flat head, and sometimes they can be really hard to remove. To get these uh, stubborn screws out of the lower unit, what I like to use is a hand impact screwdriver. And you can take it along with a hammer and it's, it's really... I've actually found this to be the only way um, to get sometimes these screws out is using one of these tools. They're really affordable, not expensive at all. I'll leave a link uh, to this in the video description. Once you get the six screws loosened for the lower unit skeg, you're going to need to remove the pivot screw located here. Once you have the six lower unit screws removed and the pivot screw, you should be able to just remove the skeg if it's stuck due to the adhesive seal and the gasket seal. You can take a rubber mallet and remove it like such. I'm gonna take a little brake parts cleaner and try to clean it off right here. All right, now to take the gears out, um, you lift up the shift linkage. This piece will come straight out of here set it off to the side. You should be able to yeah, remove this whole gear train as a unit. You may have to pick up a little bit on the shift rod. and It should slide out as a unit. Now down inside of here you'll see the main drive cog this is what connects to the one end of the drive shaft and it should come out and there's a washer as well that comes out. At this point you should just be able to pull straight up on the shift rod linkage and it should come straight up. What I like to do here is stuff some shop towels or you know newspaper or something down in here. Maybe you can cover it up with some tape. Just basically something that you can stuff down in here and whenever you flip the lower unit, it's not gonna get oil and stuff all over your floor. Alright, so now on the top side we basically have our drive shaft and our impeller housing. So to take off the impeller housing, there's three screws, 
one here and then one there and one there. Remove those three screws and the impeller housing should slide right off. You can see that this is in really bad condition. The impeller has a bunch of trash in it. The impeller should just slide right up and off. And one thing to note is this key. You do not need to lose this key. This is what engages the impeller. The impeller has a slot right here. This key goes in here and that is what rides in this slot and causes this impeller to turn. If you lose this key or don't put it back in, um, the drive shaft won't engage the impeller. Once you have the impeller and the key off, the drive shaft should just slide straight up and out like such. This plate should come off. <clears throat> and this now should expose the upper seal. It's kind of messy, but here will be our upper seal and underneath it will be um, a, a roller bearing that we need to inspect. If the roller bearing is missing any of its pins, you'll need to replace it. Um, but you'll need to replace this seal. This seal will come in the seal kit and whenever we do this we need to inspect the roller bearing underneath it. Here's the seal right here. It's this bronze or brass looking thing. Um, it's basically just a, a housing and inside of it is a rubber gasket. So this is pretty flexible material. Um, you don't have to worry about damaging it whenever you're removing it because we're going to replace it anyway. And if it's been in there a long time, it may have some resistance. And there you have it, the old seal. If your um, needle bearing was bad, you would need a, an extraction tool for that bearing that looks like this. This isn't the exact one. Um, I'll, I'll leave a link to the part number um, to the exact uh, uh, bearing removal tool in the video description. But it would be like this and you would slide it in from the bottom side, tap it with a hammer, and the bearing would come out the top side. You would slide in a new one and tap it back into place. That's how you would you would remove it. But um, I think these are relatively cheap, like less than twenty bucks. I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, so yeah, it's it's well worth it to just buy this tool and let that be an easy process. Fortunately, though, uh, our bearing is still in good condition. So the last thing we need to do um, in tearing down the lower unit is there is a brass bushing here and it's the shift rod bushing. Um, hopefully you can see it in that light. Hopefully you can see it down there, but it's a brass bushing. And you're gonna need this special tool. It's a different tool than the one I just talked to you about with the roller bearing. Um, this one's really cheap and you can get it on eBay or boats.net. Um, also check the video description. I've tried to make everything easy for you to where if, the, if this is a project you're having to do, 
Um, you don't have to go hunt and search for the part numbers for everything or where to find everything. You can just check the video description and everything's right there. So that's why I keep telling you to go to the video description is I'm trying to help you out. But you use this tool and it's the same process. Flip it up over on the bottom end. Um, you can see here that kind of there's a step gradation on one end and you slide it down in the hole and you, and you tap out the tap out the bushing. You can just slot it out and remove the bushing off the tool. This way um, you can reuse this brass bushing. Um, what you're gonna need to remove out of here though is the rubber O-ring that's on the inside. You can do that with a, the pick set. This is in the seal kit and we'll replace it so you can throw this one away. One last thing I forgot to mention is on the skeg, um, around the perimeter of this mating surface is a rubber gasket that we're going to end up needing to replace. So you need to go ahead and remove that, especially before you start you know, cleaning the surface off. So once you have these surfaces cleaned off, and I used a bench top uh, wire wheel um, to clean off these surfaces, once you have all that um, where you like it, um, there is a magnet in the skeg that collects um, just metallic pieces and from wear and tear on your drivetrain or gear train. And we just want to clean that off. I mean, we got it open, might as well. Uh, clean out all the metal debris um, that it's collected during its time. You want to make sure that all of these surfaces up here are nice and clean, especially down in there where you're going to reinstall that new seal. Um, we're going to start with the rebuild, I guess I forgot to mention, from the top side. So, you know, we're Spraying this with brake parts cleaner and craps going down the hole, the drive shaft hole. And that's okay for now because um, the bottom's still open. We're gonna put everything back together, top side first. There's one last seal you need to take out, and it is the seal uh, on this part, and it is located right here. It's just like the seal that was located in in this housing same concept so one way that I like to remove it is it's gonna come out this way so if you have a vise or something like this where you can put it in here grab a screwdriver you don't care about and you can stick the screwdriver in on this side and tap on it you know, 90 degree angles. You can see it's starting to deform. Maybe in there pretty good. So you may have to keep tapping on it for a while. And there you have it. Once you have this seal out, we're pretty much done disassembling everything with the minor exception that you need to remove this rubber o-ring. You'll get a new one of these in the seal kit. All right, so now I have the all the mating surfaces cleaned off and the this part completely disassembled. So you start looking at the drivetrain. 
Now the drivetrain or the gear set completely disassembled uh, looks like this. Um, I say completely disassembled, there are some pieces that, um, you know, come off, obviously. Um, like this comes out of there. So you can take it down, another notch is this. But one thing I wanted to show you is on this uh, piece here, which is your propeller drive shaft, you have the clutch dog. Now the clutch dog is kind of in place um, as it should be at the moment, and but it can be removed. And you need to be very careful whenever you're doing this, like use um, a couple of hands. And because when you take it off, you're gonna reveal two ball bearings and a spring. Make sure you do not lose those. And then your clutch dog comes off. And what that does is there's a hole here and the spring is in the center and then there's two ball bearings on the outside. Those ball bearings uh, seat in a notch inside the clutch dog. And that's what keeps it in the center whenever you wanna shift it in forward or reverse. Um, it, it allows that nice pop lock into place back into neutral and it locks it into neutral. So you want to be careful whenever you're taking this apart not to lose the spring and the ball bearing. To put it back together um, you can use a little bit of grease and put that in the hole on either side. Slide in your spring and what I like to do is hold the uh, spring and ball bearings with my finger here. Next thing you need to do is make sure you line up the ball bearing with the clutch dog. Once you got it lined up, you just slide it over into place. It's that easy. A couple of pieces you want to check out in the gear set is, is this piece here. It is a needle bearing. You can see all the needles in there. You want to make sure you have all the needles accounted for. Um, if this bearing is, is really bad, rusted, um, you can find these pretty easy online replacement parts I'll leave a, a link in the video description for this and another one is on one of your main gears you also have another roller bearing like this and you want to make sure that it's still in good operation not rusted or damaged in any way and again I'll leave a link to that in the video description other than that you just want to inspect your gears uh, make sure you you know you don't have excessive wear on the teeth or missing any teeth. Uh, make sure your interfaces with your clutch dog are good, and make sure your main pinion gear is in good shape too. Since these look to be in pretty good shape, I'm going to go ahead and pack these with a little Marine 24C grease. <laughs> 